At the commissioner's meeting on Tuesday, September 8th, Dr. Sia Tola from the Queen Anne's County Department of Health gave the commissioners an update about the COVID-19 pandemic and how it pertains to Queen Anne's County citizens. Check it out. Well, as you all know, the governor has put us in phase three. And what does that mean? Well, that means we have a little bit more freedom in what we would like to see open and what we'd like to do. But I think the one thing that I would like to say, I think we're all done with COVID, but COVID's not done with us. Mm -hmm. I think we need to continue that message of social distancing, face coverings, hand washing, and if you're sick, stay home. And those individuals in our community who have ex extensive health histories need to be very judicious and careful about social gatherings and who they do spend time with. And with that, I would like to commend the citizens of Queen Anne County, members of the health department, members of Queen Anne County government. We have done an amazing job by the grace of God. To the day today, we have had 618 positive confirmed cases of COVID in six months. And it's almost to the day six months ago, we started this nightmare. <laughs> this is a nightmare that won't go away for a while until we truly have a vaccine that is effective. And right now there's three promising vaccines that are in the works that are being tested. We still do not really know a lot about this virus. Matter of fact, I read an article this morning Apparently, they had used the supercomputer in Tennessee to figure out the DNA and the RNA and the pattern of this virus. And it seems to be attacking the ACE2 inhibitors, which are in our, uh, the predominance of those, believe it or not, are in our nose. And that's how the virus is getting into us. But this virus then gets into our body and starts changing things in our body called bradykinin. The bradykinin then affects your bowel, your heart. It affects the blood-brain barrier. That's why we're seeing neurological symptoms in patients with COVID. Seizures, memory loss, stroke-like symptoms. And one of the key pieces that they have found with this study is vitamin D. Vitamin D significantly impedes the ability of bradykinin to affect the systems of our body. So as time goes on, as we all know, we're going to learn more about this virus, what we have to do. We don't know the sequelae of this virus, but we do know that over time, with medical research and looking at science, not politics, but science will make the difference how we proceed over the next year. Dr. Cito, you said vitamin D as in D. David. Vitamin D. As in David, as in we get from the sun. We get from the sun, but it's also one of the highest deficient vitamins in our body. Hmm. And I think people need to be aware that vitamin D Vitamin C and zinc have a significant impact on recovery from those individuals who are infected with this virus. So, so hanging out at the pool, playing golf outside in the sun, all justified. Your wife's not going to buy that. <laughs> <laughs> and to give you a breakdown of where we are in the county, We've had 22 individuals pass away in this county. 17 of them were residents of a long-term care facility. Mm. One was the staff member who was in her late 60s 
in that facility who also passed away from complications of COVID. So of the 22 deaths, 18 can be attributed to one location. <coughs> now, as far as prevalence of age, I gave you all a sheet that breaks it down by different age groups. Mm -hmm. And when you look at zero to 18 age group, that accounts for 18.4% of the positive cases in our jurisdiction. The next highest is our 20 to 29 year olds who all think they're invincible no matter what. <laughs> they have a tendency to do reckless behavior as we all did at that age. That's 18.4%. So Doc, while you're there, if you could, because I, I got a question for you, because I'm, I'm with the whole opioid deaths, the way they're calculated in the state, I think we've had this conversation before, but I want to say now that I think it's more prevalent because now kids have gone back to college. Obviously, they fall in this age category. We have, and I know there has been an outbreak at Salisbury University, which we have quite a few Queen Anne's County kids that go to Salisbury University. Are we getting those stats credited back here to Queen Anne's County because they're Queen Anne's County residents? Yes. So, really? So that they're counting so, these numbers? Right. Yes, so that to me becomes fact, concerning in, when our per percentage goes residents up, residents but it's 30 kids at Salisbury, but we're, it makes it look like we have this big infection going three, on. We had three 19-year-olds yesterday that were our three positives. Hmm. All three are in college. That's, yeah. One was in Salisbury, one was in a college in North Carolina, and that's the importance of contact tracing because it really gives us the information to be able to follow number one not only where this individual may have contracted the disease but where they potentially can spread it but yes these are individuals who live in queen anne county but they may be contracting it in ocean city south carolina college and this is the age group, unfortunately, when they're returning to college, is partying. And it's social gatherings that have been 40% of the cases are transmitted through large social gatherings. Now, I know with the governor's phase three, outdoor gatherings have now been allowed to be up to 250. My major concern is weddings, and large social gatherings like that. And, and I must say that the venues in Queen Anne County have done everything they can to help prevent spread. They've done the social distancing, they've done the face, the face coverings requirements, and they are really working with the bridal parties to make sure people present have been screened appropriately so that you don't have a random heavy outbreak from one event and that's my biggest fear but i must say the businesses have been extremely compliant here in queen anne that's why i felt comfortable lifting the recommendation of about 75 and older with special permits when the governor raised this to 250 i felt that we did not need that added protection because of talking to the venues, talking to the owners. They've been very cooperative about this and very, very attuned to what needs to be done to prevent further spread of this disease. Doc, real quick, so I know that the governor's called this phase three, but as you read the original phasing, the way it came out, to me, this is about phase two and a half or two and three quarters because in the original phase three, it was basically life as normal. I mean, capacities were back to 100%. There was no restrictions. So this kids really back isn't, in school. Yeah, if kids are in school, this isn't really phase three this by is, the original document. Not by the original document, this is not. And we are not really at the original document of phase three. And it, as you all know, because you get a copy of the daily surveillance, they added an extra number to that because of this phase three and the plan for reopening schools. And it's what's called your daily case rate. The plan was with the daily case rate, and right now, 
our case rate is sitting today at 9.6. Case rate for school indication goes from 5 to 15. Case rates of 5 and under for a jurisdiction, you can go back to full in-class school systems. It's that gradient of 5 to 15 that there has to be some modification and adjustment of what you're doing as far as class activity, whether it's partially virtual, partially in-person. But according to MSD and the Maryland Department of Health, 15 means you're shutting down again as far as school is concerned. And when you look at today's report and you go through these numbers, Poor Ocean City or Worcester is sitting at 21.6 cases per day. That's residents. That's not people visiting Ocean City. You look at our surrounding jurisdictions, Caroline County is sitting at 25.7 today. Dorchester is sitting at 17.4. Now this is on a seven day average. So this is, this is the yo-yo effect that we're gonna deal with, with this as we go along. This, again, that yo-yo goes down, but it's coming back up. And that's what we faced with this entire outbreak. So Dr. Citola, where did you say we were again? I'm sorry. Today, we are sitting at 9.6. Okay. Question, sir. Yeah, okay. what's, what's your hospitalizations right now? Hospitalization right now, we have one individual in the hospital, and she has been in long term. We have had 24 total hospitalized patients that have been positive in, <coughs> in our population. 23 have been discharged. One other question for you, sir. This is a cumulative number. How many infections do you think you've got running right now in the county? Right now? You ran. Realistically, I'd say maybe about 40, and that's a high number, a yeah. high estimate. And I'd rather look at high than lower. We are testing essentially four days a week. Monday and Wednesday, we are doing mobile testing, either Ken Island or Sudlersville. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're running the mobile test, the drive-through test in the health department. Now also, because we hit an 8.5% positivity about a month ago, we asked Alms Corporate to help us with setting up Chesapeake College again as an appointment only testing facility. They run Monday and Wednesday at the college. Matter of fact, next m Monday morning, I'm gonna meet with Dr. Sumta, who is the CEO of Alms, at 8.30 at Chase College to go over their testing capability and facility. Where we stand now, our regional hospitals, both Anne Arundel and Shore Regional, are able to maintain the COVID positivity and those in admitted. Today, I believe there are four positive COVID cases in the hospital in Easton. I think there's one in Chestertown. The hospital has been able to meet those needs and address the hospitalization without being overwhelmed. And hopefully we will be able to continue that. Doc, when you're, when you're circling back to your numbers, you were saying with Worcester County at 27 point, that's not total positive cases today. Is that a percentage of testing cases? Is that no, what that is? Their percentage of testing. But what was that 27, I guess, is what I'm- The 21.6. Right is positive cases per day. So they're adding 21 that's, per day? That's based on a seven day average. So wow. over seven days. So 140 some a week, basically. Their percent positivity is sitting at 7.6. The state average right now is essentially for positivity, it's based on 3.7 as the state average. The state average on seven day case rate is unfortunately sitting at 11.0. So even for a phase three, we're seeing a lot of cases. And I agree with you. 
This is not the true phase three, which was originally presented when all this started and what the governor had laid out for his mm -hmm. Maryland plan. I would agree that we're at a two and a half. So do you, do you get data on deaths over the last 30 days? We get data on deaths daily. Right, but I'm saying, so when's the last time someone in, in Queen Anne's County passed away from COVID? More than 30 days, less? Probably 30 days. 30 days. 21 to 30 days, if I remember correctly, the last step. Now, the CARES money mm -hmm. has allowed us to a lot, to do a lot with what we've been doing. We've hired significant amount of contractual workers for both contact tracing. COVID link is the electronic tracking device and reporting device. We've hired contract nurses to help with testing, CNAs to help with calling the positive cases and doing the contact tracing. And our test results now, since we left LabCorp and went to the Maryland State Lab, we're getting results within 24 to 36 hours, and we're able to call those negatives and let them know. We know. And all of us up here have been tested. Yep. We all did. Yep. <laughs> and it was, and, it was and less the people than 24. Who been tested, it's, it's quick. Yep. You're in and out, like yep. literally five minutes in and out. And if that, yep. I mean, we have a very efficient, effective drive-in testing and using the less invasive intranasal test, which is specificity, I would say is about 92 to 95 percent. But it's a lot easier than trying to do the brain tickle with a nasopharyngeal swab. Todd loved it. And the other thing is, by doing the internasal and self-application of the individual, we're saving on burning through very sparse PPE. Yeah. Yeah. We are well supplied for at least the next six to nine months for PPE, thanks to the CARES funds. Good. But gentlemen, I have to say something about our CARES funds, and we don't have an answer from the state, and we don't have an answer from the feds. December 31st, they go away. How we're going to be able to do the amount of work we're doing after the 30, 31st of December may depend upon what the state is willing to put forward mm -hmm. and what the feds are willing to put forward. I think having gone through the numbers today with Todd is I think we've got a cushion on some of the money that we've been putting aside for administrative support to carry us for about four to six months into next year. But I think it's important that our legislative leadership knows and that our federal leadership knows that we need to be able to roll remaining funds forward from the 31st of December, where we need more CARES funding from the feds in order to truly address all of the needs that we have going forward. I don't think I need to say anything more. Very good. This. And I want to really thank the citizenship of Queen Anne County for being as conscientious, respectful, and alert to what needs to be done to protect their families, their loved ones, and their neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. For more information, check out their Facebook page at QACDOH or check out their website, health.maryland.gov slash QAHealth. Thanks a lot.